scenario planning is to think about the future in multiple possible plausible futures, not to predict the future, but think of many possible futures. There's so much uncertainty with climate change, uncertainty with the climate, there's uncertainty you know, with how we should respond to it, and there's a lot of uncertainty of how the uh, environment, the ecosystem will respond to, to climate change. Scenario planning is a way of digesting a lot of that uncertainty and thinking about a range of possible futures. The way the Park Service is using scenario planning, science is the key that feeds the data that helps develop those future scenarios. So here, for example, at Exit Glacier, what's the plumbing going on under, inside the glacier? How, what is that new dynamic as it moves up the hill? How much bed load you know, needs to come down from those slopes that are now bare into the system? You know, those are all important questions for us to look at, to understand um, as we ponder, you know, what the longer term solution to our, our road flooding situation is. In order for a lot of our visitors to get to the Exit Glacier area, they have to drive a road that the park constructed almost 20 years ago. And I think when that road was designed, it was originally designed with, you know, sort of thinking about historically what happened in terms of flooding and what they had to be aware of. In the last three years, we've had flooding occurring on Exit Glacier Road in the summertime. We have often have had flooding in October when we get the most precipitation. But what's interesting about these events is not only the timing, but that they're happening when we're not getting any rain. And so it's actually increased melt off of the ice field and, and the glacier itself. So now we're sort of in response mode because the design anticipated flooding from one direction when now it's coming from another. So we're trying to get a better understanding of the hydrology within this watershed so that we can make informed management decisions. We're trying to figure out, is this just a natural, a natural change, an avulsion of the, the channel back into an, a historic channel, or is it a migration, or are we seeing more flow or more sediment as Hexa Glacier is retreating? Because we really do think we have a new dynamic here with the glacier uh, no longer being on the outwash plane, that it's, as it recedes up the hill, the equilibrium's changed on the hydrology here at the Exit Glacier, so that's something we need to uh, come to understand. Well, when people come to Kenai Fjords and they see these glaciers, and maybe they see historic photographs of what the glaciers used to look like, that's when they realize that there really is change occurring. They go out there and think, wow, I cannot believe this. When I was a little kid, I, you know, the glacier was right here, and now it's way up there. And I think it makes them realize, what can I do? How do I influence this? And I think that people do make little choices in their day-to-day -day lives of trying to have less of an impact on the environment and on the world. Here at the glacier, it's such a compelling place, venue, landscape to actually talk about climate change. That opens the opportunity to talk about what are we doing to mitigate for um, a carbon footprint that uh, we produce as part of our park operation. You'll find that uh, we have these hydrogen fuel cells that fuel our nature center that's off the grid. You know, and in town, um, we use the electric car where we've sort of stepped back and looked at exactly, you know, what are we using vehicles for? What are the alternatives to just jumping in a car and doing some of those things that we do on a daily basis? You know, we can be role models and, and try to set good examples of, of like, hey, we don't only want you to do something, but we're doing that also. There's just a whole variety of things that we're, that we're working on to really show by example ways that people can change their habits and, 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 and thus reducing carbon footprint. History is not really your guide to the future in an era of climate change. How can we be successful in managing parks when it's going to be so unpredictable, when there's so much uncertainty? And, and that's where I think uh, a uh, technique like scenario planning really helps managers like myself.